back to the Mookie Tilson channel and you are looking live at the Pinhole Holy Grail Wall of Fame. Um, and this is another triple Lindy dive into the VR pool, a three-headed video response for John 3D80's kid, Hugo Signs of the Pastime, um, in Orlando of a collector's dream along with Sammy Thunder. We are going to look at uh, a hobby obsession. We are going to look at uh, a new hobby possession. And we are going to talk about some hobby friendships um, at the end. So I hope you'll stick around with me. But we begin where it all began for me uh, at the at the cork board here. <laughs> um, and it all started with uh, my first ever video in April was was pinning Willie Mays up and asking, what do you do with the pinhole card? Um, I feel like these pinhole cards are an obsession of mine. I'm obsessed with them. I'm obsessed with collecting them. I'm obsessed with recovering them. I'm obsessed with making sure that they're they're never destroyed um, because to me all of the damage that has been done to them uh, is evidence of love. They are victims of love, these cards, and they're evidence of a way of collecting that is way bygone and is never coming back. Um, so instead of slabbing or you know top loading these cards, these cards were pulled out of packs and they were put onto walls using uh, sharp devices like uh, thumbtacks and Grafco map tacks and um, arrange the best way that the kids who took them out knew how uh, so that they could keep them up close and personal with them. The players that they loved uh, in full view, just the same way collectors do now. And so um, there's a uh, Walker, Texas Ranger on the right there. You got a big Tom Seaver contingent on the left there. There's Willie Mays, the 54 Tops, Ernie Banks exhibit um, by Johnny Bench that my buddy Pete gave to me. Um, some of these cards have writing on them, like when Yogi Berra became a Mets coach, some kid decided to make a traded card out of it. Um, same thing with the Nolan Ryan over here when he went to the Angels. Mets got scribbled out, <laughs> Angels drawn in there. Uh, Junior Gilliam is a new one. There's Stan the Man, Frank and Hank, Big Luke, uh, and Sandy Koufax. And these cards are just like, you know, to me, they're jewels. They're total uh, relics of, of a bygone time um, and total evidence of um, a different era. And they're not to be, <laughs> these cards will never be graded but they shouldn't be thrown out either. And I, for one, am gonna to continue to, um, um, what would you call it? Curate them <laughs> on cork, including this pile you see in front of you. Um, this is a pile from a single collector, clearly from a single collector, who had more thumbtacks than he did uh, cardboard and decided to pin every card he ever pulled onto the wall and including cards like here's a 1970 Brad Carew and Jim Bunning Hall of Famers Hoyt Wilhelm with the nothing on his hat Tony Oliva Don Drysdale common cards Dave Watkins the backup catcher for the Phillies got like skewered time and time and time again top and bottom for this kid like Dave Watkins but it goes on and on. Lots of Metsies here. Tommy Ag, hero of the World Series. Cleon, same thing. Even ha here's Jay Johnstone, <laughs> who uh, was called out on strikes by Frank Drebin in the Naked Gun. You may recall he was wearing a Mariners jersey at that time. But a young Jay Johnstone in the outfield. Um, so lots of their sweet Lou. Lots of 70s cards. All of these have pinholes in them. So this kid put every card he had up against the wall. Maury Wills, Mel Stottlemyre, 69. Tops, uh, 86 Mets coach. Don Buford, who homered off of Tom Seaver to start the 69 World Series, uh, which was a high water mark for that Orioles team. And, you know, it goes on and on. All these pinhole cards. Five bucks on eBay. <laughs> um... And by the way, this was the only 1963 Topps card, Clay Dalrymple. Um, and you can see the, the wound on the back. 
And my postulation is, my anthropological uh, guesstimation here, is that this kid, whoever collected these, was either a, a Phillies fan or a catcher or both. Um, because, um, I don't know, got two good Phillies catchers there. So that's my guess. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, I love these cards. I love collecting them, and I'm not going to stop collecting them. I have a big one coming in, actually, that um, I'm super excited about. So we'll show that when it comes in. So that is my obsession for John 3D 80s Kid. So uh, thank you for sitting through the pinholes. Um, I want to turn now to Hugo, Signs of the Pastime, one of my uh, very favorite channels. Um, and Hugo uh, is asking to see our greatest pickup of 2023. Um, and it's hard after going through that symposium on pinhole cards not to pick uh, the pinhole card to stop all pinhole cards. This 1949 Bowman Jackie Robinson rookie, um, which is one of my favorite pickups ever. Maybe my, I don't know, I, one of my favorites. I, I did a whole video about the, the way I got this card. It was the Father's Day Miracle, so if you want to go back and watch that. Um, but needless to say, this card is just the apex of, of uh, my collection, for sure, um, as a pinhole card um, and as Jackie Robinson's rookie, uh, being the historic figure that he is. And when I saw this card at the card show in Garfield, New Jersey, <laughs> where I frequent, um, I needed to get it. I had to get it. Um, it was way more expensive than I, I could afford. And so I rushed home to look and see if I could find some cards. I left the card show, came home, and rooted through my own collection to see if there were any cards I could put together to trade for this card. And luckily, the Fish family, the father and son duo who I love at Garfield, were willing to deal with me, um, and I sent them pictures of some cards that I had, and they agreed to do a, a you know, partial trade, cash and trade um, offer. Um, and so I went and picked it up and traded some cards and put some cash on top of it, um, and Jackie came home with me. And so that was one of my favorite things ever. The thing that I have never shared on this channel is what I traded for it. Um, I traded a, a beautiful 1969 Topps uh, Nolan Ryan uh, in a six, CSG six. It was just very well centered. I traded a 54 Topps um, Jackie Robinson in a PSA one, which was had a little tear in it, but it was otherwise gorgeous. Um, but I had to, if you want to get, you got to give. <laughs> And the other big card I traded for it was um, my 1954 Topps Larry Doby, a card that I had bought raw um, and was among the first cards I ever had graded. This, it was a beautiful card. Um, I had it graded and it came back a six. So when I gave up this card, I was not thrilled. <laughs> I didn't want to have to give up this card. But again, in order to get, you got to give. Um, and so I traded my, my 1954 Topps Larry Doby away. Um, and it always rubbed me the wrong way. <laughs> that was the one card I felt like I bought it raw. I had it graded. It was the first card I had graded. I really, I love Larry Doby. I really shouldn't have given up that card. So you could imagine my surprise when uh, a few weeks later, guess what turned up on eBay? Uh, Greg Morris cards. The exact copy of 1954 Topps Larry Doby in a six. Um, I couldn't believe it. I went nuts. I immediately made plans to camp out and win an auction for this card. Um, and seven days later, uh, when the auction ended, yours truly was the high bidder. And Larry Doby uh, 1954 Topps became the first boomerang card uh, in my life. <laughs> I ended up getting it for a little less than what the trade value I, I got from the Fish family, which I felt kind of bad about, but at least it was back in my possession. So Larry came home uh, to be with Jackie, um, which I am thrilled about. And so those are my 2023 collection uh, possessions for Hugo, Signs of the Past Time. Now, when it comes to um, Orlando and Sammy Thunder, uh, their video response, they're asking for us to identify somebody that they consider a hobby friend, somebody that they communicate and, 
have met online and met through YouTube and, and, and shout them out. And I have a hard time with that. <laughs> um, I have met so many people um, and have sort of different variations of communication with them. I would feel weird calling them out. Who knows if they want to be associated with, with me? Um, so I'm sort of leaving that one. I'm going to cheat on that one. And I'm going to cheat this way. Um, I just watched a video the other day um, on the DPZ sports cards show. I forget what it's called. I'll put a link to it down there. Um, with Matt, 1956 Tops Guy. Um, he's somebody whose content I enjoy on Instagram. He does these lives that are really awesome. I see him in comment sections all the time commenting. He's just a great guy and um, a great collector and has the same sort of romantic view um, uh, of, of collecting that is really appealing and really fun. Um, he and I, I, I feel like are on a very similar wavelength when it comes to how we approach and view cardboard. Um, and so when I saw him on this interview the other day, I thought, oh, I got to go subscribe to his channel. I, I don't think I do. And I clicked through to subscribe and he has no subscribers. And so guess what I did? I subscribed to him. 1956 Tops Guy does not create content on YouTube um, and therefore had no subscribers. Of course, he's created no content on YouTube, but I'm his first subscriber. That's me right there. That's your boy Mookie. So Matthew, 1956 Tops Guy, I love uh, your content that you create elsewhere. Uh, maybe if enough of us subscribe to you on YouTube, you will come over and join us. Um, I, w if, I would love to reach out to you and, and, and chat, and maybe I'll do that on Instagram by, by direct message. Um, but um, and hopefully develop a hobby friendship. How about that? Um, is this thirsty? Maybe I'm thirsty. I don't know. <laughs> but I think you do a great job. I really appreciate what you do and how you collect. And so there I'm saying it. So that's my VR for Sammy and Orlando. There you go. And I'm sticking to it. So I think that's it. I'm going to stop talking and end this now and be over. And that's it. Thank you.